Hi, everyone. This is your host, Betsy Wurzel, uh, chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio Network, where our mantra is to educate, enlighten, and entertain. The views of the guests may not represent those of the host or the station. Folks, I cannot believe it is April already, and I could tell you this, the older you get, the faster the time goes. You're going to want to stay tuned for my guest, who is absolutely so talented and amazing. My guest is Tammy Lawrence Sandelsky. I hope I pronounced that right, Tammy. She is a yoga meditation teacher, hypnobirthing, childbirth educator. You have to ask her about that. A Reiki master teacher. She is host of the podcast, I'm Still Here, Messages from the Other Side, which I was a guest on um, last year. And uh, listen to her show because it's really very interesting. And Tammy Lawrence Zimbalski is also an author of many books you can find on Amazon, various coloring books and a book on childbirth, which uh, we can discuss also. So I want to welcome Tammy Lawrence Zimbalski to Chatting with Betsy. Welcome, Hi, Tammy. Beth- Hi, Betsy. Hi, everyone. Well, I sound busy. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I hope I pronounced your last name right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Symbolism. Terrible names. <laughs> That's okay. Symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> so, Awful names. I, I, uh, you are so talented. Um, I'm reading about you, like I do every guest. I'm like, wow, I didn't know all this about Tammy. That's why I do research. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a I'm long like... time coming, let me tell you. So just to give everyone a little bit of background on how I got into this kind of work, and then I'll explain a little bit about what, I, what it is exactly that I do, because like you said, it's, it's, it's a lot, and as I mentioned, it sounds like I'm really busy. Um, so I lived in an area just outside of Toronto, and I moved to Cambridge, Ontario, which is about an hour west of Toronto, uh, 20 years ago, 22 years ago now. And when I arrived, I couldn't find a job. Now, I had my bachelor's in sociology, but when I moved here, I couldn't find work. So I went to a psychic of all things, and this psychic told me I was going to teach yoga and uh, meditation. And I thought, you are out of your mind, because at that point, I couldn't even talk in front of two people, let alone a group of people. So... Had had it, it turned out that I did end up looking around because I couldn't find a job, and there was someone in town that was teaching uh, yoga. So I thought, well, I'll just go talk to her and see what happens. And I ended up, she gave me a payment plan, so I didn't have to pay a lot of money at first. I think it was only like $300 at that point to get certified. Now her course is like $3,000, so in 22 years, it's really gone up quite a bit. And um, so I, from my background, I had suffered from depression for years. I had a whiplash injury. So it was really a personal growth, self-development type of thing. So that's how I got into yoga. The same year, a friend of mine was into Reiki, and she said, do you want, do you want me to teach you Reiki? I'll teach it to you, and then you can teach it as well. So I thought, okay, I'll do that. And then one of my students... Um, when I was working at the YMCA here in Cambridge, she was having a baby using this technique called hypnobirthing. And she said, do you want to come to my birth? And I thought, well, first of all, I'm terrified of birthing. So yeah, um, no. (laughs) She said, if you're afraid of birth, you should look into hypnobirthing. So that year, I ended up getting certified in a Reiki master teacher, yoga certification, and hypnobirthing. So I was up to my ears in study. <laughs> wow. I never heard of hypnobirthing. Can you uh, tell us what that is? And talk about your, your book that you have on Amazon about that, because I'm not familiar with that. So if I'm not familiar with it, I'll just assume my audience isn't either. Yeah, so hypnobirthing is a natural childbirth education classes, and they were designed by this woman called Marie Monaghan. And what Marie did is she took this uh, whole idea that the body is a robot to the mind. So when we look into practicing birthing, mostly 
in birth, you're put on your back to birth, you're forced to birth in a way that probably is not uh, in instinctive birth. Uh, the medical team around you is telling you when to push and when to breathe and when to do everything and to not have a birth that unfolds in a way that's just very natural. So she used Dr. Grantley Dick Reed's information with natural childbirth to understand that if there's not tension in the body and we can remove the fear, then birthing can be a more natural process and including something that could be pain free. So through a process of five two and a half hour classes, we teach women how to connect to their own natural birthing instincts in order to birth their babies in a way that's more intuitive and natural. So we use hypnosis, guided visualization, specific breathing to help women to birth their babies in that way. So wow, I have interesting. no children myself. However, I have helped to birth over 93 babies so far. Wow. I wish, wish I knew about that when I had Josh. I, I mean, I went to natural, you know, the Lamaze. I don't know if that's the same thing. But, no, you know, I yeah. had Lamaz, but I, I couldn't um, – have natural childbirth, Josh was too big. Um, so, but I wish I knew about like, you know, the visible, visual, I can't talk, <laughs> visual, go ahead, say it for me, <laughs> visual, <laughs> there you go, thank you, can't talk this morning, folks. <laughs> um, you know, the breathing, you know, we, we knew that, and, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's even improved, Josh will be 38, so I'm sure things have changed with the Lamaze method. Um, can you tell the folks the name of your book, Tammy? So on Amazon, my uh, book is there's a, that's basically just as far as the birthing goes. There, the, one of the books is about uh, birthing affirmations. So it's like a little workbook where you uh, write down all of the information that. Um, a, get you into the thinking of having a positive birth yourself. And to be honest, I have so many books, I can't even remember the name. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> Isn't that bad? That's right. I should have written it down, but that's okay. It's going to be in the uh, the blog. I'm going to put it in the blog. Um, <laughs> I want to side note with something like, what did you expect? Oh, yeah. So that is another book based on um, what you did not expect while expecting. Is that, that is that oh, book. Oh, okay. And that is has to do with things like if you have, if you're experiencing pain um, and whatnot, how to alleviate or bring more comfort again into your birthing body. Now that's interesting. Oh, well, how did you go from from that into? And we met last year in mm -hmm. a podcast boot camp. So how did you go from that to the, your podcast? Uh, talking to people about messages from the other side. Okay, so again, I kind of consider myself like a transitional coach for like the main things that happen in people's lives. So it starts out with the birthing experience, and then throughout someone's life, I teach them how to do yoga, how to meditate, just to get people to relax. In the process, Reiki master, so if you need some healing, I could help you with that. Uh, mind change work with hypnosis and the hypnodoodle uh, artwork that we'll talk about later. Um, chair yoga, when people get older and they can't get on the floor for yoga, we just transition the whole experience into a chair. Um, also work for a cancer support uh, community and help people go through cancer journeys. So this is a really long story, but basically what happened in 2015, my brother passed away. And he was quite young. He was only 45. Well, he actually, he didn't even see 45. He was 44. Uh, my mom passed away at 69 years old in 2018. And then I just lost my best friend to a condition called TTP, which is a, a blood disorder, a very uh, horrific disease, um, that she did, passed away in 2020 of November, so not even two years yet. And one day I was in meditation, I was doing a Bob Proctor meditation, and I heard in my head, you should start a podcast. And I thought, yeah, right, a podcast. I don't think so. I didn't say anything to anybody, and nor did I do anything about it. But 
it was very clear that the podcast should be about messages from the other side and the grieving journey. So that week, I, like I said, I didn't tell anybody, but all the conversations around me, people started talking to me about messages from the other side. So it was like the universe had this great big arrow that was like, go this way, including my father, who doesn't much believe in this type of thing. But he was, even he said, did you know that over 80% of people believe that we do get like some kind of messages from the other side when people die? So after my dad said that, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to do it. I had never done a podcast before. Like I said, we met on Kathy Heller's um, a podcast boot camp. So I thought, well, here we go. I was so nervous to get this started. Do you remember back to when you first started podcasting? I'm sure you can remember how crazy that was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm yes. going to do what? <laughs> so what started it was that I just kept getting these messages from the other side. So I'll share a couple stories if you don't mind. Oh, please do. So I after hear my them. brother died, maybe two, a week or two weeks after he died, now my, all of these people who I just mentioned, like my foundational people, so my mom, my best friend, my brother, that's like your whole world basically leaves you at the same time. So within five years, it was, it was really, really challenging to get through that. But what made it easier was that I kept getting these strange messages that I knew beyond a reasonable doubt were these people. So after my brother passed away, I was driving my car and uh, I never have money in my car. So my money is in a wallet that's inside my purse. The purse never gets opened when I'm in the car for any reason. I'm not a drive-through person, so it's not that, you know, money could have fallen out somewhere, whatever. So I left my car, parked it, came in. The next morning I go out into my car, and there is a penny and a nickel on the gear shift placed perfectly as if someone had set it there. Six cents. Wow. And I just had to laugh because this is my brother's sense of humor. Yeah, he would have went, oh, there's your six cents from the Bruce Willis movie of however many years ago that was. So that was one of the situations that happened, one of the messages I received. Now, my mom, also this one has to do with money. After she passed away, I decided I would upload a video on YouTube. And on this video... I had all of the pictures of her life, and I put music in the background, and I, I, you know, got it all ready to set up onto YouTube. Well, I had so many problems, and I'm pretty computer savvy, but I had so many problems getting this computer to load the pictures properly the way I wanted them, and then also problems uploading it to YouTube. It just wouldn't accept it. So I worked probably, something that should have taken me two hours normally took me two weeks to get this silly thing done because it just kept computer problems like crazy. So finally, the day that I got it uploaded, I uploaded it. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Turned the, put the lid of the, the laptop down, went to do something else, came back, and right in the very center of the top of the laptop, there was a dime. And I said to my husband, did you put this here? Like, I was freaked right out by this dime. Like, it was seriously in the exact center. Like, you would have had to take a ruler to get it in the exact center of the laptop lid. And my husband at the time, he was here, and he was playing video games in the living room. And he said, Tammy, I haven't moved for two hours. I've been playing this video game. <laughs> and if you have anyone who plays video games around you, you know that oh, yeah. two hours is... <laughs> That's pretty much a regular time on, on the video game. And I just could not believe, and I know that that was my mom jumping in to say, you know, yeah, I'm still here. Thank you for putting that video up on the, on the uh, line for me. Wow, that's incredible. I, I'm so sorry for all your loss. That's a lot of loss in a short amount of time. Thank I, you. I, yeah, I, definitely. That's is. very painful. Mm -hmm. You know, my heart goes out to you um, to lose people so close together. I mean, at any time, but just close like that is just, it's devastating. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. It's, it's devastating. And um, uh, I believe, uh, as, as I was on your show, 
I get signs from Matt. Um, there's no no doubt about it. Now, did you get a sign from your friend? I did. Now, she's a funny one because she sends hearts. And I don't know why, but I get hearts all of the time. Oh, I actually think of it. Of, let me park that hearts idea for a moment because this one's even crazier. So um, one day I'm sitting, I'm working on the computer. This is uh, two days after she passed away. My back door, which has a deadbolt lock on it, was locked, obviously, because I'm in the house and I'm working away on the computer. It was around 11 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden, I was writing something about her online, I think on my Facebook page, and the back door opened wide. A gust of wind, a cold, cold blast of air, the deadbolt locked door... (laughs) Like, how does the door unlock itself? I don't know, but it did. And a blast of cool air came in, and I felt her. It was like she hugged me. And I felt this hug from nowhere, and she was only about 5'2". I'm 6'1", and 5'3", sorry. And uh, I felt a hug from a being that was about six, uh, 5'3". <laughs> it was the craziest thing. Wow, you know what? I, I, I truly believe that we get signs. I know it because I've experienced it myself. Um, a sign I got from my dad, my dad wore Old Spice, and Matt never wore Old Spice. And I'm here, I was here by myself, and all of a sudden I got such a strong scent of Old Spice. And I said, Dad, is that you? got to be you because you are the only one who wears old spice that I know of and then it went away yeah but I knew that it had to be him it had to be yeah. my father it's true and it's funny when those smells come in I know uh, my brother I used to call him the smoking man um, because he was a heavy smoker and he would cu- it would come in with the smell of cigarette smoke so um, a few times again when my family was together driving in the car I could smell the cigarette smoke. Nobody else in the car could smell it. And I was like, why do I smell cigarette smoke? And it was strong, like they were blowing smoke right into my nose. (laughs) Like, you can't deny these things, and we can't be making them up. It's got to happen. So some of the things, like physical things, like dimes and money showing up somewhere in the most random places, uh, three weeks ago, I was doing one of my podcasts, and in the background of my room, I record on Zoom, and a heart came in through the blinds in the sunbeam. And I said to the person that I was talking to uh, during the podcast, do you see that? And she said, yes. And I said, oh, my God, Karen shows up as a heart all the time. And as soon as we acknowledged it, it disappeared. So someone else got to see that one, too. It wasn't just me. <laughs> Wow, that is cool. Now, have you had messages from your loved ones in your sleep? Has there been dreams where they've done something and it's come to um, happen? Um, Well, I can tell you, so I teach meditation. That's one of the things that I do. One night I taught this meditation that um, right after my brother had passed away and it goes that you relax your body and then you see this staircase that goes up. It, it isn't towards heaven necessarily, but it goes up towards this magical place where you go and um, do a, some clearing work and get rid of some of the things that you're no longer wanting. So after I had taught it, that night I laid down in bed and I thought, I'm going to do that meditation too um, b- to take myself to sleep. And as I'm about halfway up the stairs in my mind, my brother was standing there on the steps And it felt as if we had an entire night of just talking and working things out. Now, our relationship, when he passed, it wasn't the greatest. He was going through a whole lot of emotional turmoil. So we didn't really have closure, per se. So it was really nice to have not only that dream, but so many dreams where we, I feel like we have totally mended everything in dream world, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. I, I asked Matt every night to come um, visit me in my dreams, and he does mm-hmm. every night. But I had a dream with my brother. My, my elder brother died, and I think it was about two weeks after Bradley died, 
I had a dream that he was uh, dressed as a mailman, and he handed me a letter, which is pretty bizarre. Mm. Two weeks after that, Tammy, my uh, younger brother calls me, and, and my mom had called me, and she said, you're going to be getting something for Josh in the mail that Bradley wanted Josh to have. I uh, <laughs> was, like, speechless because Bradley was sending me a message in my dream that he was going to be delivering something Mm -hmm. as it happened. Wow. So that was, that was like really, um, so, uh, bizarre for me that, that, that it happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, um, I've gotten, I still get signs, uh, from that. And, uh, it's, I don't believe in coincidences, things do happen. And I've been doing interviews lately on people, uh, people saying about, you know, signs from the afterlife. And uh, I, I definitely uh, believe that. Uh, one time I had a sign from Matt. It was beautiful. It was a, a yellow arch, very detailed with flowers. Um, designs of flowers on there. And I know yellow means happy, you know, being joyful. Mm-hmm. And I said, wow, man, you must be really happy. Thanks for sending me that sign. I never had it again, but I know what I saw. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think people question the signs or either that or they're so, they want a sign so bad that they kind of push it away or they skip it. It, it's like it happened so fast that they miss it all together. Um, for example, there was this truck that I noticed driving around uh, Cambridge here one day. Well, not one day. It drove around for about two or three weeks, and I kept seeing this truck everywhere. And it had some big logo on the side, but I, I didn't notice what, what it was. I didn't pay attention, but I kept noticing the truck. So one day I was teaching yoga in a class, and it's a two-story building that you, on the second floor you can look down and you can see the street. Well, finally, after noticing this truck for two weeks that I'd never seen before, and now all of a sudden this truck is everywhere I look, when I'm teaching, I look down, and it said Dave right on the side of the truck. And it was a Dave's plumbing or something like that. But um, when I looked down, I saw the words Dave. For two weeks, he was trying to get my attention to say, look at this truck, look at this truck. And the moment that I noticed that it said Dave on the side of the truck, I have never seen that truck again since. So there, we, you know, we could have, I could have easily missed that. Um, within that same week, it was my birthday, and I was driving towards um, Canadian Tire, and I pulled up behind a truck that had a license plate on the back of it, a Ford truck. Now, my brother was a Ford master mechanic, so to make it even more confirming, <clears throat> excuse me, and the license plate said Bro Man. Well, my brother always called himself hey, it's your bro man calling you or whatever. He was always bro man to me. What are the chances of seeing a license plate that says bro man on my birthday on a Ford truck? And again, I only saw it once. I've never seen the person again. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) One time, uh, it was for a couple of days, and it was around my mother-in-law's wedding anniversary. And... (laughs) The shower um, curtain holder kept falling on my head. (laughs) It would fall on my head. And I put it up and fall on my head. And I said, okay. Uh, I said, okay, Mary, I know you don't like the fact that I'm living in your house, but you know I took care of you. You know I took care uh, I'm taking care of your son. So you need to stop. Stop dropping this on my head. And I put it back, and it never happened again. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. One of me, but uh, sometimes I hear um, footsteps, and I think Josh is home, and, he, and he's not home yet. So it's either Matt walking around or my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. Because and the thing is, these messages so they real. don't have to mean anything to anybody else except for the person that's receiving them. Yes. Right. Yeah, like, that's true. Back to Karen and these hearts and seeing the heart in my podcast room. Um, She put hearts everywhere for the longest time. Uh, The 
couple of weeks after she died, well, no, she died in November, so this would have happened in December. We had a big snowstorm, and we have this tree in the backyard that she uh, nicknamed the Whomping Willow because every time you walk by it, you get hit by a branch from the tree when it's windy. (laughs) And through this tree, as the snow fell, it cascaded hearts all over the tree. Now, I took a picture of it, but the picture just didn't do it justice. But every single limb and every crook in every branch of the tree, there were hearts all over it. It was the most beautiful thing. And I just know that that's her because I didn't notice any of those things happening before she passed. Yes. Yeah, that's... Sometimes I see uh, feathers Mm -hmm. outside, different colored uh, feathers. I believe it's meant. Uh, leaving it for me or find a, a penny. But um, one night, it wasn't a hurricane Ida. It was a storm the year before that where I had gotten water in the basement and I'm laying in bed, I'm crying. And my shade uh, to my bedroom is down, so I don't see outside. Tammy, I saw a big yellow star. Never mm-hmm. saw it again. And I said, and it has to be you, Matt. Everything's telling me everything's going to be okay. And never saw it again, but I know what I saw. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like I could look outside. You know, this was this thing was huge, not a regular star. It was bright yellow again, mm-hmm. the yellow again. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It, um, so, Dr. Brian, I don't know if you say Weiss or Weiss, but anyways, I just uh, retweeted this quote that he put on Twitter that I wanted to share. Um, and he said, Uh, This is just 21 hours ago from whenever we were recording this. But he said, life is endless, so we never die. We were never really born. We just pass through different phases. We incarnate into this physical plane to learn our spiritual lessons. There is no end. Understanding that we are eternal souls, not just bodies, will bring balance to your life. And I think that's really key. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience so of course we move along we're just energy and energy moves through form into form and out of form time and time again so when people lose someone and that grief is insurmountable if we realize and remember that there are they are still in existence we just can't see them Uh, they're just in another room somewhere on another level it does Bring some solace and it can make us feel even better, which is one of the reasons for my podcast, not only to talk really about messages from the other side, which that's one of my favorite topics. I really love talking about that, but also to give support to people and to help them heal through their journey. And thankfully, I'm a few years past the majority of like the biggest grief where you know it, you know, the grief from losing Matt, where you're down on your knees and it's, it's, you can't even walk outside because it's so challenging for you. Um, but when you're past that part of the grief, to be able to know, well, how do I move on with this person missing in my life? Because it's such a huge component. They're, they're missing. What do I do now? How do I move forward? So this is one of the reasons for uh, the podcast. I'm still here. Messages from the other side. And it is a great podcast. Where can people hear it, Tammy? Anywhere that you listen to your podcast. If you just punch in, I'm still here. Messages from the other side. You'll find me. Oh, great. And I want to suggest to the audience, um, I highly recommend listening. Tim has fantastic guests, and it's worth uh, listening to. And, and, you know, I feel, yeah, we'll always miss and love our, uh, you know, loved ones. There's no question about that. And we'll have the pain is there always. But, you know, I feel like Matt is still here with me. I can't say my late husband. I just can't say that because I still feel he's with me. It's you know, funny you say that because uh, you know. people, people like when a sibling passes away, I've heard people say, well, I'm an only child now. And I never say that because I wasn't an only child. In fact, I have two brothers. One passed before he was born in utero about eight months, so I never got to meet that being. Um, but then my brother, who I spent 44 years with, I'm, I'm not an only child. Of course I'm not. I have brothers. I just, they're busy doing whatever. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not here. Yes. Yeah. You still feel them uh, with you. And I know you want to talk about your coloring books, which you have mm. several on Amazon. And I want to suggest to the audience to go 
look up those uh, coloring books. How did you get into that, Tammy? You're so, a busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I don't even know what started getting into the coloring books. I and I love art. I love to doodle, and I've I've just been an adamant uh, doodler for years. And my current uh, project that I'm working on is Hypno Doodle. So what Hypno Doodle is is positive affirmations for change. So it has a positive affirmation with a little whimsical picture. And the whimsical picture usually is whimsical women or uh, a scene or usually it's birds and animals. I don't know why. I just I like to doodle animals. But I think it's back to grief or anything that people are struggling with to know that we have the power to choose a thought, to borrow Bob Proctor's uh, sentence, uh, we have the power to choose a better feeling thought. So when we're going down the rabbit hole of grief or anxiety or depression, which again, I, I know this, I've lived it, we can make those changes by thinking differently. And it's not easy it, it, because we think 95% of the thoughts you have today are the same thoughts that you had yesterday. But when we take control of where our mind is going and direct it in a more positive way, we can create change. So this is the whole basis behind HypnoDoodle, which people can find on uh, my Instagram account, which is my, uh, I'm at Tammy L. Symbolisti. Symbolisti being C-Y-M-B-A-L-I-S-T-Y. And there, there is a free piece, a little doodle that is up every single day, and people can get their little uh, affirmation for the day. Actually, I put them up Monday to Friday, so five days a week. They can get a positive affirmation. And it's just reciting it time and time and time again, and eventually the mind will believe what you're telling it. So, but we do need to give it direction. Yes, that's true, and I have really learned that um, immensely uh, recently. Um, you know, my your thoughts, our thoughts, affect our health, mental mm -hmm. health, physical health, and I've heard that before, but it really hit me like a sledgehammer um, last month by interviewing several guests who had similar things to say about thoughts. And I did take a course called uh, Coherence um, Revolution, which was absolutely very beneficial to me by Dr. Mark Halperin, uh, who's in Canada, Toronto, as a matter of fact. And it really, I've, I mean, I, I think I will always have some sort of um, post-traumatic, but it, it has helped me a lot. And then you realize after 10 years of caregiving, I'm addicted to stress and adrenaline. And right. I have to get off of that. Uh, you really am learning about my mind and my body at the age of 64, folks. It's never too late. I always tell people that. <laughs> it's Absolutely. never too late to change um, this, your, this, your way of thinking. Where uh, doodling comes in, because doodling has the benefits. It decreases the cortisol levels, so the, the stressor hormones you were just talking about. You get that adrenaline rush, but then you kind of crash afterwards because all of the, you know, excitement is gone from the body. So uh, doodling helps to release the cortisol levels. It improves mental health. And overall, it's just a great stress reliever. And then hypnosis, same thing. When we come into a hypnotic state, we can access the subconscious mind. So when you keep feeding the subconscious mind, which doesn't know the difference between right or, or wrong, it doesn't know true, it doesn't know false, it believes everything that it's being told. So when we say something like an affirmation, um, one of the recent ones I put up, I choose to live in love, I am joy, I am peace. So even if I don't believe any of that, if I, my conscious mind, the critical mind, your yeah, but mind, if I, if I focus on, I choose to live in love, I am joy, I am peace, and I tell myself that time and time and time again, the subconscious mind believes it immediately, and the more you work with it in time, the conscious mind will also believe it. Yes, yes, that's what I, exactly what I have uh, been learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, or to you know, think of an event that has that you want to happen and think that it has happened. Um, 
I have uh, also heard that too. Tammy, mm-hmm. I love having you on the show. You are so amazing. Can you give people um, a website where they can get in, t- in touch with you, learn about your yoga and uh, the different classes you have to offer? Absolutely. So my main website is reikiandyoga.com. So it's R-E-I-K-I-A-N-D, yoga.com. And if that one's a little too challenging, because I know people are like, what did she say? <laughs> um, you could just go over to Twitter. I've got a link tree on there. And it's just, I'm at capital T-L-L-C. And you can find my link tree and all of my offerings there as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we met in that podcast boot camp. And uh, much success to you. And thank you for what you're doing to help others um, in their grief journey. It, it, it does help to know that we're, we are not alone. You know, people think, oh, if I say that I'm getting signs, people think I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I say? <laughs> Let them think you're crazy. Who cares? I was <laughs> right? Just- I was just going to say that, Betsy. Some people are going to think we're crazy anyways, so whatever. Let them think what they think. And just one other thing before, before you get off. And by the way, thank you so much for having me on today. It's been a pleasure, and I've really enjoyed uh, meeting with you as well. But I just wanted to tell people, uh, there, uh, one of the people that I know, an acquaintance, uh, I found out just passed away last week, someone I used to work with by suicide, a tragic, tragic story. But what, one of the things that's important is we never know what's going on in someone's world from the outside looking in. The woman that I'm referring to has two children that are extremely successful in the music industry. She has a daughter who is a chiropractor. She's got uh, her other children. Everybody is successful. Her husband is successful as well. They own property in uh, an area that is it's um, how do I want to put that I don't even know the words to explain it but anyways it's it's a high end community high end property in, in a specific area from the outside looking in this woman looked like she was on top of the world she didn't have to worry about money she had a successful family she had successful home home life so from the outside looking in her life looked great but yet she committed suicide So I think what's vitally important is for people to remember to bring kindness and compassion to all of the people that we meet because we have no idea what is actually happening in their world. And to know for everyone that it's okay to not be okay. Healing takes a lifetime of work. It isn't a magic wand. I wish I had a magic wand to heal people, but we don't. So if we know that together we can create change and together we can help people heal through their journeys and to offer kindness and compassion to everyone you meet and also to yourself because this living life is not for the faint of heart. (laughs) True. That's, that's beautiful, Tammy. You know, we're so much alike. I said, I just said that to someone the other day. I wish I had a magic wand to take away (laughs) you know, the pain of what we go through and, and people that are in sorrow. And you're right. We don't know what other people are going through. Look at famous people who have committed suicide, who had everything that we thought that they had everything. Cause it looks like they have everything, but yeah. money cannot buy inner, inner peace. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big mental health advocate also. And I just want to tell the audience, you know, we, a lot of people think they're alone in how they feel, and you're not alone. If you are thinking of suicide, if you are excuse me, having trouble with daily living, please seek help. Please seek counseling. It is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength when you know you need help and you go for uh, to get help. I go for counseling. I get great counseling every two weeks. Not ashamed to say it. I had counseling when Matt was going through Alzheimer's. I'm not afraid to say that either. We, at some point in our lives, need help. And nobody, I get emotional, nobody should ever throw stones at anyone for going for help because you don't know what life has for you. 
and you might need to go for help, and you wouldn't want anyone to make fun of you. I get emotional because it's very dear and near to my heart. But um, thank you, Tammy, for bringing that up. <clears throat> that is so true, so very true. Um, and I always end my podcast with to be kind. Um, so thank you so much for, for coming on, and uh, much success to you in your um, various endeavors <laughs> that you do. <laughs> and I loved talking to you and, and having you on. Um, so, folks, please read the blog that Jeannie White, the stage manager, writes. And thank you, Jeannie, for producing the show, writing the blog. All the information will be in there about Tammy Lawrence Zembelski. And um, I say check Tammy out. She, her books are all on Amazon. And you could just type in her name and you'll see all her books. Uh, show up and um, the, the links will be in the blog also and I want to thank Lillian Caldwell CEO Pastoral Talk Radio that makes this all possible I want to thank you the li- listeners for listening please share this podcast to help other people you know folks I used to worry about what people thought of me too and then I said screw that I'm going to do my own thing if people like it they like it and if they don't they don't I'm not everyone's cup of tea and everyone's mine. And that's okay. It's okay. And you're right, Tammy. It is okay not to be okay. We all struggle with something. Everyone's fighting a battle. And um, I want to thank everyone for listening. And remember, folks, in a world where you could be anything, please be kind because people need it. And shine your light bright. And if people think you're too bright, tell them to put on sunglasses. You <laughs> keep shining. And uh, that's what I have to say today. Thank you, everyone. Till we chat again, this is Betsy Wurzel, your host at Johnny with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio. Bye-bye now. <laughs>